Yeti. The Yeti or Abominable Snowman is an ape-like cryptid taller than an average human that is said to inhabit the Himalayan region of Nepal and Tibet. The names Yeti and Métis are commonly used by the people indigenous to the region, and are part of their history and mythology. Stories of the Yeti first emerged as a facet of Western popular culture in the 19th century. The scientific community generally regards the Yeti as a legend, given the lack of conclusive evidence, but it remains one of the most famous creatures of cryptozoology. Analysis of samples associated with claimed yetis found a sequence of mitochondrial DNA that matched a sample from an ancient polar bear jawbone found in Norway, that dates back to between 40,000 and 120,000 years ago. Etymology and alternate names The word yeti is derived from Tibetan, gy dread, wily, gyr dread, Zypy, Yash, a compound of the words Tibetan, Gy, Wiley, Gia, Zypy, Ya Rocky, Rocky Place, and, Tibetan, Dread, Wiley, Dread, Zypy, Che, Bear. Pranavananda states that the words T, Te, and T are derived from the spoken word to, spell Dread, Tibetan for Bear, with the so softly pronounced as to be almost inaudible, thus making it Te. Or tea. Other terms used by Himalayan peoples do not translate exactly the same, but refer to legendary and indigenous wildlife. Mish, Tibetan, me dread, wily, me dread, zypy, mish, translates as man bear, zati zat translates as cattle, and the full meaning translates as cattle bear, referring to the Himalayan brown bear, migoi or migo, Tibetan, miagod, wily, Miagod, Zypy, Migo Mergo, translates as wild man, Bun Manchai, Nepali for jungle man that is used outside Sherpa communities where Yeti is the common name, Merka, another name for wild man. Local legend holds that anyone who sees one dies or is killed. The latter is taken from a written statement by Frank Smythe Sherpas in 1937, Kang Admi Snowman. The Abominable Snowman the appellation Abominable Snowman was coined in 1921, the same year Lieutenant Colonel Charles Howard Berry led the Joint Alpine Club and Royal Geographical Society Everest Reconnaissance Expedition, which he chronicled in Mount Everest The Reconnaissance, 1921. In the book, Howard Berry includes an account of crossing the Lhakpala at 21,000 feet, 6,400 m, where he found footprints that he believed were probably caused by a large loping grey wolf which in the soft snow formed double tracks rather like those of a barefooted man. He adds that his Sherpa guides at once volunteered that the tracks must be that of the wild man of the snows, to which they gave the name Mito Kangmi. Mito translates as man bear, and Kangmi translates as snowman. Confusion exists between Howard Berry's recitation of the term Mito Kangmi, and the term used in Bill Tildman's book Mount Everest, 1938 where Tillman had used the words mech, which does not exist in the Tibetan language, and Kangmi, when relating the coining of the term abominable snowman. Further evidence of mech being a misnomer is provided by Tibetan language authority Professor David Snellgrove from the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London, circa 1956, who dismissed the word mech as impossible because the consonant TCH cannot be conjoined in the Tibetan language. Documentation suggests that the term Mech Kangmi is derived from one source, from the year 1921. It has been suggested that Mech is simply a misspelling of Mito. The use of abominable snowman began when Henry Newman, a longtime contributor to the Statesman in Calcutta, writing under the pen name Kim, interviewed the porters of the Everest Reconnaissance Expedition on their return to Darjeeling. Newman mistranslated the word Mito as filthy, substituting the term abominable, perhaps out of artistic license. As author Bill Tillman recounts, wrote long after in a letter to the Times, the whole story seemed such a joyous creation I sent it to one or two newspapers. History Pre-19th century According to H. Siger, the Yeti was a part of the pre-Buddhist beliefs of several Himalayan people. 
he was told that the Lepcha people worshipped a glacier being as a god of the hunt. He also reported that followers of the Bon religion once believed the blood of the Miagod, or wild man had used in certain mystical ceremonies. The being was depicted as an ape-like creature who carries a large stone as a weapon and makes a whistling swish sound. 19th century In 1832 James Princip's Journal of the Asiatic Society of Bengal published Trekker B. H. Hodgson's account of his experiences in northern Nepal. His local guide spotted a tall, bipedal creature covered with long dark hair, which seemed to flee in fear. Hodgson concluded it was an orangutan. An early record of reported footprints appeared in 1899 in Lawrence Waddles among the Himalayas. Waddle reported his guide's description of a large ape-like creature that left the prints, which Waddle thought were made by a bear. Waddle heard stories of bipedal, ape-like creatures but wrote that none, however, of the many Tibetans I have interrogated on this subject could ever give me an authentic case. On the most superficial investigation it always resolved into something that somebody heard tell of. 20th century the frequency of reports increased during the early 20th century, when Westerners began making determined attempts to scale the many mountains in the area and occasionally reported seeing odd creatures or strange tracks. In 1925, N. A. Tom Basie, a photographer and member of the Royal Geographical Society, writes that he saw a creature at about 15,000 feet 4, m, near Zemu Glacier. Tom Basie later wrote that he observed the creature from about 200 to 300 yards, 180 to 270 m, for about a minute. Unquestionably, the figure in outline was exactly like a human being, walking upright and stopping occasionally to pull at some dwarf rhododendron bushes. It showed up dark against the snow, and as far as I could make out, wore no clothes. About two hours later, Tom Basie and his companions descended the mountain and saw the creature's prints, described as similar in shape to those of a man, but only six to seven inches long by four inches wide. The prints were undoubtedly those of a biped. Western interest in the Yeti peaked dramatically in the 1950s. While attempting to scale Mount Everest in 1951, Eric Shipton took photographs of a number of large prints in the snow, at about 6,000 m. 20,000 feet, above sea level. These photos have been subject to intense scrutiny and debate. Some argue they are the best evidence of Yeti's existence, while others contend the prints are those of a mundane creature that have been distorted by the melting snow. Peter Byrne reported finding a Yeti footprint in 1948, in northern Sikkim, India near the Zamu Glacier, while on holiday from a Royal Air Force assignment in India. In 1953, Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgau reported seeing large footprints while scaling Mount Everest. Hillary would later discount Yeti reports as unreliable. In his first autobiography Tenzing said that he believed the Yeti was a large ape, and although he had never seen it himself his father had seen one twice, but in his second autobiography he said he had become much more skeptical about its existence. During the Daily Mail Snowman expedition of 1954, the mountaineering leader John Angelo Jackson made the first trek from Everest to Kanchenjunga in the course of which he photographed symbolic paintings of the Yeti at Teng Bosch Gompa. Jackson tracked and photographed many footprints in the snow, most of which were identifiable. However, there were many large footprints which could not be identified. These flattened footprint-like indentations were attributed to erosion and subsequent widening of the original footprint by wind and particles. On March 19, 1954, the Daily Mail printed an article which described expedition teams obtaining hair specimens from what was alleged to be a yeti scalp found in the Pang Bosch Monastery. The hairs were black to dark brown in color in dim light, and fox red in sunlight. The hair was analyzed by Professor Frederick Wood Jones, an expert in human and comparative anatomy. During the study, the hairs were bleached, cut into sections, and analyzed microscopically. The research consisted of taking microphotographs of the hairs and comparing them with hairs from known animals such as bears and orangutans. Jones concluded that the hairs were not actually from a scalp. 
he contended that while some animals do have a ridge of hair extending from the pate to the back, no animals have a ridge, as in the Pangbosch scalp running from the base of the forehead across the pate and ending at the nape of the neck. Jones was unable to pinpoint exactly the animal from which the Pangbosch hairs were taken. He was, however, convinced that the hairs were not of a bear or anthropoid ape. He suggested that the hairs were from the shoulder of a coarse-haired hoofed animal. Slavomir Rawaich claimed in his book The Long Walk, published in 1956, that as he and some others were crossing the Himalayas in the winter of 1940, their path was blocked for hours by two bipedal animals that were doing seemingly nothing but shuffling around in the snow. Beginning in 1957, a very wealthy American oil man Tom Slick funded a few missions to investigate Yeti reports. In 1959, supposed Yeti feces were collected by one of Slick's expeditions. Fecal analysis found a parasite which could not be classified. Cryptozoologist Bernard Huffmans wrote, since each animal has its own parasites, this indicated that the host animal is equally an unknown animal. The United States government thought that finding the Yeti was likely enough to create three rules for American expeditions searching for it, obtain a Nepalese permit, do not harm the Yeti except in self-defense, and let the Nepalese government approve any news reporting on the animal's discovery. In 1959, actor James Stewart, while visiting India, reportedly smuggled remains of a supposed yeti, the so-called Pang Bosch hand, by concealing it in his luggage when he flew from India to London. In 1960, Hillary mounted an expedition to collect and analyze physical evidence of the yeti. He sent a supposed yeti scalp from the Kumjung Monastery to the West for testing, whose results indicated the scalp was manufactured from the skin of a saro, a goat-like Himalayan antelope. Up to the 1960s, Belief in the Yeti was relatively common in Bhutan and in 1966 a Bhutanese stamp was made to honor the creature. However, in the 21st century belief in the being has declined. In 1970, British mountaineer Don Willans claimed to have witnessed a creature when scaling Annapurna. According to Willans, while scouting for a campsite, he heard some odd cries which his Sherpa guide attributed to a Yeti's call. That night, he saw a dark shape moving near his camp. The next day, he observed a few human-like footprints in the snow, and that evening, viewed with binoculars a bipedal, ape-like creature for 20 minutes as it apparently searched for food not far from his camp. In 1983, Himalayan conservationist Daniel C. Taylor and Himalayan natural historian Robert L. Fleming Jr. led a Yeti expedition into Nepal's Buran Valley suggested by discovery in the Baron in 1972 of footprints alleged to be Yeti by Cronin and McNeely. The Taylor-Fleming expedition also discovered similar Yeti-like footprints, hominoid appearing with both a hollux and bipedal gait, intriguing large nests in trees, and vivid reports from local villagers of two bears, Rukbalu, tree bear, small, reclusive, weighing about 150 pounds, and Buibalu, ground bear, aggressive, weighing up to 400 pounds. Further interviews across Nepal gave evidence of local belief in two different bears. Skulls were collected, these were compared to known skulls at the Smithsonian Institution, American Museum of Natural History, and British Museum, and confirmed identification of a single species, the Asiatic black bear, showing no morphological difference between tree bear and ground bear. This despite an intriguing skull in the British Museum of a tree bear collected in 1869 by Oldham and discussed in the annals of the Royal Zoological Society. There is a famous Yeti hoax, known as the Snow Walker film. The footage was created for Paramount's UPN show, Paranormal Borderland, ostensibly by the show's producers. The show ran from March 12 to August 6, 1996. Fox purchased and used the footage in their later program on the world's greatest hoaxes. 21st Century In 2004, Henry G., editor of the journal Nature, mentioned the Yeti as an example of a legend deserving further study, writing, the discovery that Homo floresiensis survived until so very recently, in geological terms, makes it more likely that stories of other mythical human-like creatures such as yetis are founded on grains of truth. Now, 
cryptozoology, the study of such fabulous creatures, can come in from the cold. The Yeti is said to have been spotted in the remote Makaram area of the Luang Prabang range range, between the Thai Highlands and Sein Yapulai Province, Laos. In early December 2007, American television presenter Joshua Gates and his team, Destination Truth, reported finding a series of footprints in the Everest region of Nepal resembling descriptions of Yeti. Each of the footprints measured 33 centimeters, 13 inches, in length with five toes that measured a total of 25 centimeters, 9.8 in, across. Casts were made of the prints for further research. The footprints were examined by Jeffrey Meldrum of Idaho State University, who believed them to be too morphologically accurate to be fake or man-made, before changing his mind after making further investigations. Later in 2009, Gates made another investigation during which he discovered hair samples. A forensic analyst concluded that the hair contained an unknown DNA sequence. On July 25, 2008, the BBC reported that hairs collected in the remote Gero Hills area of northeast India by de Plumarac had been analysed at Oxford Brookes University in the UK by primatologist Anna Nikaris and microscopy expert John Wells. These initial tests were inconclusive, and ape conservation expert Ian Redmond told the BBC that there was similarity between the cuticle pattern of these hairs and specimens collected by Edmund Hillary during Himalayan expeditions in the 1950s and donated to the Oxford University Museum of Natural History, and announced planned DNA analysis. This analysis has since revealed that the hair came from the Himalayan girl. On October 20, 2008 a team of seven Japanese adventurers photographed footprints which could allegedly have been made by a yeti. The team's leader, Yoshitaru Takahashi claims to have observed a yeti on a 2003 expedition and is determined to capture the creature on film. A group of Chinese scientists and explorers in 2010 proposed to renew searches in Shenongja province, which was the site of expeditions in the 1970s and 1980s. At a 2011 conference in Russia, participating scientists and enthusiasts declared having 95% evidence of the Yeti's existence. However, this claim was disputed later. American anthropologist and anatomist Jeffrey Meldrum, who was present during the Russian expedition, claimed the evidence found was simply an attempt by local officials to drum up publicity. A Yeti was reportedly captured in Russia in December 2011. A hunter reported having seen a bear-like creature, trying to kill one of his sheep, but after he fired his gun, the creature ran into a forest on two legs. Border Patrol soldiers then captured a hairy two-legged female creature that ate meat and vegetation. The creature allegedly was more similar to a gorilla than a bear, but its arms were shorter than the legs, in contrast to a gorilla. It was about 2 meters, 6 feet 7 inches, tall. This was later revealed as a hoax, or possibly a publicity stunt for charity. Possible explanations Misidentification of Himalayan wildlife has been proposed as an explanation for some Yeti sightings, including the Chuti, a langa monkey living at lower altitudes, the Tibetan blue bear, the Himalayan brown bear or Dzati, also known as the Himalayan red bear. Some have also suggested the Yeti could actually be a human hermit. A well-publicized expedition to Bhutan reported that a hair sample had been obtained which by DNA analysis by Professor Brian Sykes could not be matched to any known animal. Analysis completed after the media release, however, clearly showed the samples were from a brown bear, Ursus Astos, and an Asiatic black bear, Ursus Thibtanus. In 1986, South Tyrolean mountaineer Reynold Messner claimed to have a face-to-face -face encounter with a Yeti. He wrote a book, My Quest for the Yeti, and claims to have killed one. According to Messner, the Yeti is actually the endangered Himalayan brown bear, Ursus Astos Isabellinus, or Tibetan blue bear, Ua Pruinusus, which can walk both upright or on all fours. The 1983 Buran Valley discoveries prompted three years of research on the tree bear possibility by Taylor, Fleming, John Craighead and Terthishthur. From that research the conclusion was that the Asiatic black bear, when about two years old, 
spends much time in trees to avoid attack by larger male bears on the ground, ground bears. During this tree period that may last two years, young bears train their inner claw outward, allowing an opposable grip. The imprint in the snow of a hind paw coming over the front paw that appears to have a hole arcs, especially when the bear is going slightly uphill so the hind paw print extends the overprint backward makes a hominoid appearing track, both in that it is elongated like a human foot but with a thumb, and in that a four-footed animal's gait now appears bipedal. This Yeti discovery, in the words of National Geographic magazine editor Bill Garrett, on-site research sweeps away much of the smoke and mirrors and gives us a believable Yeti. This fieldwork in Nepal's Burun Valley led directly to initiating in 1984 Makalu Burun National Park that protected over half a million acres in 1991, and across the border with China the Kamu Langma National Nature Preserve in the Tibet Autonomous Region that protected over six million acres. In the words of Honorary President of the American Alpine Club, Robert H. Bates, this Yeti discovery has apparently solved the mystery of the Yeti, or at least part of it, and in so doing added to the world's great wildlife preserves such that the shy animal that lives in trees, and not the high snows, and mysteries and myths of the Himalayas that it represents, can continue within a protected area nearly the size of Switzerland. In 2003, Japanese researcher and mountaineer Dr. Makoto Nbuka published the results of his 12-year linguistic study, postulating that the word yeti is a corruption of the word meti, a regional dialect term for a bear. Nbuka claims that ethnic Tibetans fear and worship the bear as a supernatural being. Nbuka's claims were subject to almost immediate criticism, and he was accused of linguistic carelessness. Dr. Raj Kumar Pandey, who has researched both yetis and mountain languages, said it is not enough to blame tales of the mysterious beast of the Himalayas on words that rhyme but mean different things. Some speculate these reported creatures could be present-day specimens of the extinct giant ape Gigantopithecus. However, the yeti is generally described as bipedal, and most scientists believe Gigantopithecus to have been quadrupedal, and so massive that, unless it evolved specifically as a bipedal ape, like Rheopithecus and the hominids. Walking upright would have been even more difficult for the now extinct primate than it is for its extant quadrupedal relative, the orangutan. In 2013 a call was put out by scientists from the universities of Oxford and Lausanne for people claiming to have samples from these sorts of creatures. A mitochondrial DNA analysis of the 12 sRNA gene was undertaken on samples of hair from an unidentified animal from Ladakh in northern India on the west of the Himalayas, and one from Bhutan. These samples were compared with those in GenBank, the International Repository of Gene Sequences, and matched a sample from an ancient polar bear jawbone found in Svalbard, Norway, that dates back to between 40,000 and 120,000 years ago. The result suggests that, barring hoaxes of planted samples or contamination, bears in these regions may have been taken to be yeti. Professor of Evolutionary Genetics at the University of Cambridge Bill Amos doubted the samples were of polar bears in the Himalayas, but was 90% convinced that there is a bear in these regions that has been mistaken for a yeti. Professor Brian Sykes whose team carried out the analysis of the samples at Oxford University has his own theory. He believes that the samples may have come from a hybrid species of bear produced from a mating between a brown bear and a polar bear. Sykes told the BBC. In popular culture, the Yeti has regularly been depicted in films, literature, music, and video games. Art Artist Stanislaw Zukolski's works all involve the Yeti. This involved painting, sculpture, and two books full of his artistic works, Inner Portraits, 1980, and A Trough Full of Pearls Slash Behold. The Pratong, 1982. Zukolski also developed a philosophy known as Zermatism in which the Yeti play a central role, along with the sons of Yeti, Yishinzani, the half-breed offspring of Yetis and humans. Films Significant film appearances include The Snow Creature, 1954, Half-Human, 1955, The Abominable Snowman, 1957, Snout Beast, 1977, Yeti, a Love Story, 
2006, Chill Out, Scooby Doo. 2007, The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. 2008, Yeti, Curse of the Snow Demon. 2008, and Rage of the Yeti. 2011. Television The Yeti plays significant roles in some television shows, including. The annual American Christmas broadcast special Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer featured Bumble the Abominable Snowman, various Looney Tunes cartoons had Hugo the Abominable Snowman who was a Yeti, the Lost Tapes episode Yeti featured a Yeti, the Abominable Snowman is a six-part serial from 1967 in the British science fiction television series Doctor Who that features the Yetis, the Yetis appeared in the TV film Abominable Christmas. They are shown to have bear-like faces. Skips from regular shows a Yeti. Video games Several video games feature Yeti-like creatures in prominent roles. For example, the video game Urban Yeti features a Yeti as the main character who undergoes a quest to find a mate in a human city. In Ratchet and Clank, going commando, the frozen tundras of planet Grelbin are home to creatures called Yeti. That attack Ratchet in his search for Moonstones, the final mystery enemy from Carnivores, Ice Age is a Yeti. In the Warcraft franchise, there are Yetis who are creatures in the humanoid category. Literature In literature the Yeti has appeared prominently in many works, including Tintin in Tibet by Herge, in Martin Messier by Alfredo Castelli, in The Abominable Snowman of Pasadena by R. L. Stein and a game book in the Choose Your Own Adventure series. The Abominable Snowman is a superhero character in the Marvel Comics publications and the Snowman is a similar character in DC Comics. Music American heavy metal band High on Fire included their song The Yeti on their second album Surrounded by Thieves. Rock band Clutch have a track entitled The Yeti on their third album The Elephant Riders. A psychedelic trance collaboration called The Mystery of the Yeti, featuring many prominent names of the genre, was released on two albums between the years 1996 to 1999. Attractions At Disneyland, a 1959 ride named the Matterhorn Bobsleds features three audio-animatronic abominable snowmen. Walt Disney World's more recent attraction Expedition Everest at Disney's Animal Kingdom is themed around the folklore of the Yeti and features a 25-foot-tall audio-animatronic Yeti which appears